So last Sunday, after, I, after service, I was talking, visiting around with some folks, and one of our uh, community members said, well, I really like what you had to say, but I'd like to, to consider talking about something different. And I said, well, what is that? And he said, well, you know, you talk a lot about this idea of oneness. Well, what about the value of separateness? And I thought, you haven't been listening to me, have you? (laughs) I didn't really say that. Um, But then I thought, we had a little more conversation about that. And what I got to was that the question was, well, what about this human stuff? You know, you talk a lot about our oneness with God, our spirit, our spirituality. Well, what about our humanity? And then somebody else after service uh, last week, as a matter of fact, um, said or said, we can't be in that consciousness 24-7. And then somebody even before that (laughs) had said, you know, you talk a lot about this idea that we're one with God, and I kind of get that, but what about our everyday stuff? You know, so if, you know, if I hear it once, I think, well, you know, whatever. (laughs) If I hear it twice, I think, well, there might be something to that. But if I hear it more than that, I'm thinking, huh, interesting. So really what I want to say to all of you, and I know you know who you are. (laughs) Thank you for stimulating something within me that, um, yeah, it was a good awakening for me. And it's not that that was all new information because I do, I've been having some of that going on for myself too about, well, what about this life experience? And am I not really addressing that, you know? And I own that because there have been times when I thought that my, my goal was just to ascend, you know, to get beyond all this stuff. <laughs> you know, and that was really what I, when I started meditation, when I started my conscious spiritual path, I thought that was the goal. That, oh, I can just leave behind this physical stuff and I can just be above it all. Anybody else ever want that? I really thought, I really thought at some point that I, my goal, my, my, my function, my purpose in this life was to go live in a monastery somewhere, you know, and contemplate God all day long or to live on a mountaintop somewhere you know but I don't think that's really mine to do not on a 24-7 basis (laughs) so what do I do with this physical life you know what is it all about and um, how do we bring that our spirituality into our daily activity our daily humanity our daily lives. And I want to say that what I recognize about that, for me, and I maybe you've kind of picked up on this a little bit too, and that I want to own, that we teach unity. We teach oneness. We teach non-duality. And we believe in that. And what I recognize about what my attitude has been and kind of where I have, what I've been teaching from is teaching separation. Because if I believe there's something different between my humanity and my spirituality, then that's separation. That's not unity. That's not non-duality. That's duality. And so I'm recognizing that I've sort of been living in this while I thought I was in the consciousness of non-duality and unity, in some ways, I've kind of been in this teaching or this idea of separation. Because I have thought on some level that there's a difference. And I think I've come by that honestly, to be, to be truthful with you. I mean, our whole Judeo-Christian uh, heritage talks about separation. There's me and there's God. There's me and there's God somewhere out there. There's me and there's this punishing, damning, judging God somewhere. Or there's me and even in unity, I'm going to just say it, 
that I have read and I have taken from some of the teaching that somehow human sense consciousness, as Charles Fillmore talks about it, bad. Spiritual consciousness, good. Anybody else kind of picked up on that? <laughs> you know? There's a lot of that teaching that's based in, and I'm not, I'm not finding fault, I'm not trying to find fault with anyone, but it is based in that Christian ethic, that Christian teaching of good and bad, right and wrong, the God and the devil, and all of that kind of thing. And so, if we really believe in unity, if we really believe in oneness, if we really believe and teach non-duality, then it's all the same. And I am really, honestly, truly just waking up to that. And if I've led you astray, I apologize. <laughs> but what I'm coming to the awareness of is that it's all spiritual. It's all divine. And if I am standing in a place of judging something as not God, guess who's creating separation? Me. If I am standing in a place, that's the whole teaching. I finally am getting it a little bit. <laughs> the whole teaching of uh, the whole Garden of Eden story. God didn't cast Adam and Eve out of the garden. They cast themselves out of the garden because they began to believe in duality. They ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, good and bad, right and wrong, God and not God, God and the devil. Where does any of that really exist? in my own mind, in my own thinking. I can only be separate from the divine. I can only be separate from God in my own mind. It's not a truth. It's not a possibility. And guess who suffers? I do. I'm the one who suffers. And guess what happens when I suffer? You suffer. Isn't that true for all of us? Isn't that true for all of us? Because it's just as Robert was singing about, you know, it's all, we're a projection, you know, of each, of each other. And when I don't love me and I think I'm separate, guess what I project out there? So are you. You know, and Jesus you know, when we go back to what Jesus said, you know, many of us, you know, the Gospel of Thomas is not in our Bible, uh, but it is discovered later. Um, he says that, and he says it, and it's, it's quoted in Luke as well. You know, when they say, well, when will the kingdom come? And Jesus said, well, why are you, at, you know, I can just see him asking, What? Again, haven't you been listening to me all this time? You know, when will the kingdom come? It's not going to come in the sky. It's not going to, somebody's going to say, well, here it is or there it is. It's not going to happen that way. Because what did he say? He said the kingdom is here and now. The kingdom is spread upon the earth in Gospel of Thomas. The kingdom is spread upon the earth, but we don't see it. We don't recognize it. We don't realize it. And what that, what that means to me today is that the kingdom, spirit, spirit, God, the awareness, and that's what I want to say, the kingdom of God to me is the awareness. When I open my awareness to the knowing, heaven, if you will, that all is spirit, all is God expressing. I am that. You are that. That 
that's when the kingdom of God comes. Do you see that? The kingdom of God comes in my own consciousness, in my own awareness. Not a place that we go to when we die. Not a place that is going to eventually come and in uh, sort of just appear. It appears in your awareness and in my awareness. That's when the kingdom comes. And I think that's what Jesus was ultimately saying. You decide when the kingdom comes. And this is really where this idea of our humanity you know, comes into play to me. Why are we here? Why are we here? How many stories are there about why we are here? You know? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I have a knowing, but that's my story. And my story today is that I'm here. What is my story today? My story today is that I am here to experience this realm of existence. And I believe, for lack of a better way of describing it, that I am a point of awareness, a point of consciousness through which consciousness knows itself. That consciousness awakens, experiences itself through me and through you. That we have subjective consciousness. I can know myself in relationship to you, and I can know myself in relationship to objects, and I can know myself in relationship to my environment. I have subjective consciousness. You have subjective consciousness. And we have the power to choose. And I think all too often, I choose not to see God. All too often, I choose to judge what I experience or to judge what I see as good or bad. Does that make sense? I'm not even sure I'm making sense. That it's my choice, moment by moment, to choose to know the divinity of everything in every moment. To choose to either judge that it is not God, thereby separating myself and casting myself out of the garden, or to choose to see God, see the divine in everything and in everyone. As human beings, we have the power of choice conscious choice but most of the time we don't exercise that power consciously it's subconscious based on old ways of thinking of seeing of being habits talked about that a little bit last week and we have 
You know, we have these, we're going to be talking about the 12 powers that Charles Fillmore discerned. Not independently, but he did discern these 12 powers of man that are innate. When we talk about powers, sometimes it can get confusing, but what we're talking about is our capacities, our faculties, our abilities. And sometimes we call them spiritual faculties. Well, again, if we're calling them spiritual as opposed to human, we're separating. They are faculties that exist within us, as us, that we have access to through our conscious awareness. And we get to choose to use them. You know, Charles Fillmore even talked about, and when I first read that, I was like aghast, because he said, you, you can use God. I was like, what? What do you mean you can use God? I thought God was using me. And I think both and, yeah? If we know God is the power, is the the universal law, is our our capacities to apply wisdom and understanding and our our power to choose and love and, and release and life and strength and all those powers that we talk about as our 12 powers, they are innate within us. And our humanity... And our spirituality are not separate. They coexist and they are one and the same. And I think it's important for us to to sort of awaken to that. It's important for me at this point in my life to really awaken to that. That they're not separate. And that through that understanding, we move about in this life experience co-creating, manifesting, demonstrating, experiencing And we can do it consciously or we can do it unconsciously. And I think for where I am today is that I'm tired of doing it unconsciously. I want to do it consciously. I want to embrace those gifts and talents and those powers, those capacities. To make conscious choices. To consciously express love. To really center myself in that life that is moving in and through and as me. All of those ideas that we come into relationship with. To express in our lives. As Bill said earlier, it's not enough that we know it. We must choose to live it. And live it consciously. And I think that's our, I'm not going to say it's our purpose or our divine calling or to our, any of that, because again, I think that speaks of duality. What I want to say is our opportunity. Your opportunity and my opportunity to step forward, claiming Our divinity, yes, but also claiming our humanity and knowing that they're not separate and choosing to live this existence, embodying those capacities and using them consciously. Because it really is through that that we create our lives. Do you know that we're always using those capacities? Always. I'm always choosing. I'm always standing in faith. I'm always using my faith. I'm always using my imagination. I'm always using some level of understanding. I'm always connecting with some wisdom. I'm always releasing something, and I'm always putting things in order. I'm always doing all of those things. But am I doing them intentionally? 
Am I using my gifts, my powers, my abilities consciously? In harmony and in order and in creating something of beauty and, you know what I'm saying? So, I think you know what I'm saying. I don't, I don't need to belabor that, but, you know, sometimes I uh, <laughs> recognize that I have this new awareness for my life and I think everybody should be excited about it. <laughs> we, <laughs> Yahoo! And sometimes I think, well, everybody already knows that. You're the, you're the one that's finally waking up to it. Um, so, as we move forward in this series of talks and uh, studying the book, Divine Audacity, um, that's really where I'm going to be focusing is recognizing our unity, recognizing non-duality in that. And how do we embrace this idea that there is this, these powers, these faculties, these gifts, whatever you want to call them, that we can truly embrace and live from and employ them consciously in our daily lives. And by doing that, how can we create the lives that we really desire to create in all aspects of our lives? And how can we together, using those gifts and talents and, and powers and faculties, co-create a world that really is, embodies this idea of unity? And oneness that embodies this idea of the kingdom of God, you know. So, I really hope you'll join us in the study. If you haven't already signed up for one of the groups, I encourage you to do that because I do believe if you really dig into these powers, dig into this book, that it can be transformative for you. It can transform your life if you're willing to really embrace these powers and be conscious of how you're using them in your daily lives. So I encourage you to do that and to be here on Sundays as we explore that together for the next few weeks. <laughs>